I'm Freddie Lundberg. I'm going to discuss a little bit about the Invincible Team 0304. We have uh, Jens Lehmann in goal. We have Laurent right back. We have Colo right centre back. Left centre back is uh, Saul Campbell. Then we have Ashley Cole left back. Holding or sitting midfielders will be Pat Vieira and Gilberto. Uh, I will play right or left sometimes, but mostly to the right. And Robert plays to the left. And then we have Thierry or Henri as a striker. And then you have Dennis as maybe a striker that drops deep sometimes. We coach within the team if there was this and that needed. But in general terms, it was a 4-2 four, four where our fullbacks will just go. We'll keep, let's say we're attacking the two centre-backs, two centre midfielders most of the time. Patrick once in a while will go, but not often. Will stay to be like a, a square of compactness in the back. So if the other team counted, we had so much power and strength in on those four that whoever counted had to do that really well. And if they were fast, Colo and Sol was fast, so they could keep with it. So it was quite difficult to counter against. That's how it used them. And so, like I said, Ashley would go, then Robbie would come inside. Probably the same if Lauren went, I come inside here. So that's how we played. Um, we will then, for example, Jerry will often drift out here. So if you look here, if you just look at the all of a sudden they're three against two on the side, so it's difficult for the opponents to um, to get the ball. And in the end, if we pass it, pass it, pass it, in the end you get one against one somewhere. Where, for example, Ashley and Thierry were very good one against one, while Robbie was more with the ball and did some cute, nice passes. Um, and then on this side you probably have Dennis dropping back, and that will drag out the center backs where we could go or Jerry could go and we could play here which was nice and me and Robbie sometimes we can end up here because we had the freedom to roam and then we had the block here of a counter back and we then tried to come back and I came to Arsenal like I would never play as a right winger and never been a right winger so that was quite nice to be allowed to to roam in but the, the general size of the team was massive and I think that's underestimated. Sometimes the, the power um, and the athleticism within the team was enormous compared to a lot of other teams. But it was uh, an honor and uh, great to play with. I think you always should have a defensive responsibility. Of course, it sounds bad. We had such a great team, so it depended from game to game if we were extremely um, on top of the game, maybe your responsibility didn't have to be so much because they couldn't really come back at you. But in the top games, you you had to defend and you had to help because everybody has to to do their job. And uh, I believe in um, in that how do you say team spirit and you have to fight for everything. I remember like once when I maybe it wasn't this year, but I played on the left, which I actually preferred. But I had Ashley behind me once, and um, I can't remember what team or what it was, but Ashley said, uh, I came down to help him with his uh, winger. So I doubled up to try to help him. And afterwards, I always remember like, Freddy, don't do that. You don't have to do it. You just go up and hurt him and I'll deal with him. I have him in my own pocket. And he said it in front of his face, but it's like a mind game within the team. And when someone says that to you, all of a sudden, I can go one against one against uh, the fullback, and, uh, which I enjoy. So it gives you freedom. So it's that balance which within the teams. It's difficult. And um, often we talk about wingers or how they, like I say sometimes, yeah, like they can cheat a little bit in the beginning because if it's, it's a mind game. So if you look at, in my opinion at least, so let's say they were attacking and you are very strong in the middle here, for example, and Wing has the ball, he goes at Ashley, for example. We have an, um, an overload here, but we have strength here. Somehow we deal with it and you didn't follow all the way down, which is your job and you have to. But in some games, if you cheat a little bit, you see some players do, and Ashley wins that one against one, you get the ball here straight away and you can just run, you can go. That player gets screamed, or the fullback gets screamed about at so much from his teammates, from his coach, that he lets you go. And the next time when it happens, he stays and you don't have to run. 
So there's a lot of those things, at least for me, that I felt goes within the team. And, and when your fullback then sometimes is not scared, he has so much confidence himself. And like we play and we try to do that once. Of course, sometimes it backfires and you have to go back, but it's interesting at least. They were very, I say that you see them as they were like modern fullbacks. Like that's the fullback you look at today because they were the ones that gave us the width often. And you look at our strikers, they probably didn't really like to uh, head the ball. So we even we came up in a higher position. Didn't mean that we always crossed the ball because there was no really no point in those days. Center backs were massive and was not the strength of our team. So we played short balls, but like I said, then fullbacks doing the width like they do today in today's uh, today's game and was very quick and good one against one and um, again like Ashley is closer to me on this side here so I talk about him most but Lauren was a oh, pleasure to play with yeah he was uh, I said it in one interview I think like almost like a bodyguard in the back like he was just so solid um, great fee if you needed a good pass he will, he will be able to play and um no, top, top. I came to Arsenal, I played as um, a 10 slash 8 in central midfield in a 4-4-2 in a my whole life, and as a 10. It was a big jump to go from the Swedish league to, to go to the champions of England or the Premiership. Uh, but I had waited to become professional, I had offers from a young age and um, I like winning. So teams in the top leagues that uh, were champions. So that's what we looked at. So we knew that the gap will be big. So for me, at least to jump in here when um, I never really played in that position in the best league in the world. And um, I felt quite lost the first year or so. Um, and sometimes I was like, what am I actually doing? I'm, I've been bought to be a center midfielder. Like I could have gone a lot of other great teams uh, at the same time when I negotiated with Arsenal. So like I was a bit grumpy, I can remember, where I felt like I made a mistake um, because they asked me to play in a position. I, I didn't know what I was doing. In those days, because it was so physical in England, you didn't really get a free kick from a lot. Being a small player was not that easy. But in those days back home, they said like I should go to Spain, Italy because England didn't suit my, I was too small. So that was in the back of my mind as well. Like I wouldn't, I didn't want to be a failure. I want to prove them that um, I could do it. And so then I um, knuckled down and started to try more, at least to listen and try to learn and really try to understand how to play that position. Because in my, how I played as a midfielder at 10, I would, let's say if you are, when I play, if this was me, when I was young, another, and the ball was down here, all of a sudden, he will start the ball watch. I will then peel off a little bit. I will come here, so he didn't dare to come with. I will then get the ball. I will isolate. I'll be one was one. I will go past him because I could then play with him. So it's football in tactics. Like you will look at him when he's looking at the ball. I will move a little bit and stuff like that. So you get the room because I'm small. But when I played as a winger, all that was out the window. I hadn't have, didn't have a clue what to do. I was marked, I always felt I had someone kicking my legs and I couldn't get the room to play football. So you have to learn those things again. And um, yeah, when I got older, I got better at it, at least. I, I just loved winning. Um, and it sounds so cocky, but I remember like for me it was the first two, three goals of a game was the important part. And I know like this sounds bad, but we played like Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday all the time. So it was hard with the Champions Leagues and stuff. And you went hard in the beginning. And if you were two, three goals up, you maybe then slow down a little bit because you knew you played three days later. What I felt was the strength of that team was that we, um, everybody was in the prime of their careers. And you look at them, there were like 11 leaders on the pitch. And you can say on the bench, I can't remember because we had so many great players, but you can say well, we had a bench of maybe Parler, there was a Canu, there was a Viltord. Like we had big, big players on the bench. Edu, I think, was on the bench. Like we had big players on the bench. And so we could use them, of course, but it was it's a great team. And there was one article, I think, 100 years ago, like where how many national team captains was in the team. And there was like loads of them. And um, that showed in the team when we played as well, because it's um, 
it was so much confident, but the main thing was like, if I, for example, went for a run here, if, for example, the striker is turned and it's like this, I come, he will sink. Some strikers would just always use your run to get the shot off. And then as a winger, you get fuming. That's happened to me suddenly. Like you don't score, you don't get assist, and people that don't really know the game don't understand that. But there was no egos how we played. So if you were in a better position, because in my opinion, every player, I said it before, in this team was top three in the world. I, without a doubt, in every position, that's what I felt when we played. But nobody then had to prove themselves. They were so confident in their own ability and what maybe on their egos, what people thought about them. People thought they were great players. So if this happened, for example, the ball would be played. Or if I came down here in a half good position, I could shoot, but I would then wait to see if he would come, I can play it back to him, both fix or even he would wait and then plop and pass the ball into open net. And people sometimes will go crazy, oh, they don't shoot enough, they don't do this. But that came to how, in my opinion, the confidence and how good we were because it didn't matter. I was always waiting for someone to have a better opportunity to, to score. It wasn't about my ego. And um, so that was something I felt special about this team. Because sometimes you can have a younger player coming in, he doesn't have a name, he needs to show how good he is, he needs to get a place in the team. And that's nothing wrong in that, but he doesn't always take the right decisions. And then the other thing was, like I touched before, if you look at, we had great leaders, or there were so many leaders. And it doesn't matter who it was or what name you had on your back, if you didn't do your job or whatever it is, there will be consequences of it. There will be big arguments in the dressing rooms. There will, yeah, <laughs> physically things will happen. And you were accountable for your actions. And I really, really like that because it's, there was no one that was like bigger than the team. It didn't matter what your name was. It was us and all we wanted to do was, was to win. And then of course you can say, we had, uh, everybody knows, but we had Arsene, which I think is an amazing human being. And he did, he at least in me, installed like self-confidence and how we played and we played it, 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 it back for passes here. So the opponents got tired. So in the beginning of the game, they were organized, but after a while, when you get tired, you lose your position. That's when you can penetrate them and you can create more chances. We often scored off, I hadn't said last 15 minutes. But people then, when I saw back on TV, commentators were like, yeah, why didn't they change their game? It's nil-nil, it's 15 minutes ago. They should put in two big strikers and they should hit along and they should gamble and hopefully they have a deflection and someone kicks the ball into the net. Well, for me, that's just hit and hope. And for me, if Arsene started to do that, he would show me, I don't believe in how we play football. I believe in like, you're not good enough for the first 75 minutes. Just hit it and we'll see what happens. And what he did for me at least was like, no, you have worn them out for the first 75 minutes. And that is where you get like the reward. And that gave me even more, more confidence that he didn't, he believed so much in how, what we could do and how we played that we always scored in the end of the games. And that you should uh, say thanks to Arsene because I felt a lot of times commentators and people were criticizing me for it. But me as a player, I uh, gave me a lot of belief. Start with the crazy German, Jens. Really good man, and we got really close outside uh, of the game, maybe stereotyping a German way, but he uh, always prepared very early and everything he did, and um, very, very uh, professional. Um, then you have Laurent as a right back. We bought him from uh, Mallorca. We played him in the Champions League. Uh, he played in the central midfielder and was their captain. And we bought him and uh, made him into um, a right back. So obviously he, um, he had the steal from playing in midfield and he had good feet. So he was offensively and defensively very, very good right back. It was a dream to play with. Um, then you have Colo Torre, which was a little bit newer into the team since the old guard had left. Was very um, athletic. He wasn't as tall maybe as you would say as a as a uh, centre-back sometimes were in those days, uh, but he uh, was so athletic that he made that up and he was very strong and he was very fast. He was one of them, like, even if he made a mistake or he always wanted to learn, he was always so eager and he was listening always to, let's say, if it was Sol next to him or, or Jens or always taking up information, which 
me as a player, I think that's very important that you have your ego is not that big that you can't listen to other players. And he was very good at, at learning and he was a very good player. Uh, then you have Sol Campbell. So Sol obviously came from uh, from Spurs uh, to us. And Sol, I mean, it's uh, he's a big man. <laughs> he was, uh, I think uh, he might get angry with me, but I think when they signed him, I heard he weighed 105 kilos when he, uh, he joined us. And uh, we had to get him a little bit fit, but I think he was around 100 mark when he played. And that's that's a big center back. And uh, but he was fast and he was good in the air and he was agile and um, so he had most of the things um, and sometimes maybe with his feet and stuff. But because he was so so good defensively and strong man against man, he yeah was a top centre back. As a left back, we have Ashley Cole, top top left back. He was a striker when he was younger. And I think he was even at Palace on loan as a striker. And somehow if they did it or we did it, he then started to become a left back when he came back. And we had Silvino at that time uh, from, from Brazil that we sold and uh, Ashley stepped in after that. And um, yeah, I mean, Ashley, rapid, light, so he could, um, he could keep up with anyone, man against man. He was tremendous if he played. I didn't say we laughed about it, but if you talk about Beckham or Ronaldo and stuff, when he played against them, like they couldn't go past him. Um, David couldn't get a, a cross in, Ronaldo couldn't dribble past him. He just took so much pride into that battle one against one. And um, it was amazing to see because when he was really young, obviously he didn't know his position. I remember Pat Rice stood next to the pitch almost every training session, coaching him on his own, like up, down, here, there, in, for, do things. And again, Someone so willing to learn in his early early years, and um, in the end, and he became one of the best left backs in the world. We have Patrick Vieira. Um, he was, I like him as a leader. I don't think leaders always need to scream and shout. He didn't try to like be the boss of everything. He just spoke when it was needed. So he led, in my opinion, how he was on on the pitch, and that was always full throttle tackles flying in and do you get tackles on your calves and yeah, you're bleeding after every game. Um, so it was different. It was much more physical. And Patrick obviously had an enormous size. He was very tall and long legs. So he could always get to the ball if there was a slight tackle. Or and he used his that size of his legs and stuff in his body to his advantage. And you'd get then Gilberto Silva that we bought in after one of the World Cups, I think, where he did well. And Gilberto is, again, one of those silent, very good football players that does his job, uh, was screening a lot, um, tackling very aware, um, probably a lot more physically strong than people gave him credit for because he was not as big maybe as what Patrick was. Good feet, obviously, uh, as a Brazilian, but then defensive-minded, um, which was a, a great plus for him that he had such good feet for, for that position. Yeah, I played to the right often, sometimes to the left. Um, and yeah, that's what I did. Um, then you have um, Robert Perez to the left. And uh, again, Robbie, top player, been with us for a while, came from Marseille. Um, quite offensive, so he didn't have maybe, oh no, offensive, but he had a great foot. So he wasn't maybe as athletic as most of the other players in the team. Uh, but he uh, he used his foot um, to very good passes, very good shooting, so he had good finishing, uh, but a bit of a different player to, to the rest of the players in the squad, I would say. Then you have Dennis, and Dennis was one of the strikers, and Dennis often dropped back, so that let us go roam, like me and Robbie, often tactically we're allowed to roam a bit free. But Dennis, uh, technically top, um, again, Physically quite um, much bigger than me. people think. Well, a big guy, so it was hard to like push him off the ball. Or uh, and Dennis, if he needed to protect himself, he knew how to protect himself. And uh, yeah, I love playing with him. Great eye, uh, I think as well. I don't know. I haven't spoken to Dennis about this, but my own reflection was when I, I actually spoke to. I think it was my agent at that time. He. Um, I think he played, it was Malmo against Ajax anyway, and Dennis, I think, made his debut as a, as a right winger. And he roasted their left back. And I think Dennis was just 
I don't know, 16, 17. And he said he was rapid. And then if you look at um, Thierry played here as the other striker. And uh, Thierry, again, most people when they see him have a surprise how big he was. Um, so Thierry was, in my opinion, then, how do you say, very powerful striker, very technical, uh, very good one against one. So he would then drift out here so he could use his speed to run past players. And would often, in my opinion at least, like I would try to explain people, there's a lot of players that have speed, so you looked at Michael Owen, for example, had speed and stuff. But then in those days, when the centre-backs were so big, there was a lot of kilos you have. So Campbell of 100 kilos leaning on you and your Michael Owen, he can like use his arms to hold you off. And uh, that was one hard thing when you were smaller and that was allowed. Uh, but if you look at Thierry, he weighed himself probably 90 kilos or more. And so in that way, the centre-backs couldn't really use that power to just lean on him to, to then lose his power. And so that's often he could use that in a very good way and then he got away with his with his pace compared to the smaller quick players. And yeah, everybody knows Thierry was a great, great striker.